Hi guys, welcome to the second video of the Golang and CSRF Enhanced Security Project uh, tutorial series. So we had we had done our main.go file in the first uh, so video itself. In the first video, we you know saw the entire project structure and how we're going to approach the project and the whole you know the drawboard, and then we started writing our code as well. And in this video, I uh, will take you uh, through some of the other files. But before that just uh, create a file here called middleware.go okay and inside middleware create a folder called my jwt and inside your my jwt folder create your my jwt.go file perfect so now we have all the things that we need all right main.go file is complete now let's start building our models. Inside our models, you'll have to have your models.go file, obviously. Models.go, sorry. Now let's start creating the model, right? So we're going to start from the base up. Let's, let's create the model first. I mean, we're going to start from the base up, but I might just, you know, switch on to some other file. I mean, I, I'm not going to build from base up. I'm just going to start from base up, all right? I hope that makes sense. So here we'll say, package models and you want to import the time package here and you want to import JWT so for JWT you'll have github.com slash uh, the same package that we used last time so it's dgri jlva slash JWT slash that dash go this is the one we use in our JWD authentication tutorial as well. So you want to create a user. It's and it's not going to be a complex user structure. It's going to be very simple. Like I said, you know, I want to focus on how to create a CSRF token instead of creating actual, you know, creating some use useful APIs. I'm not doing that in this uh, series. For that, we'll have many more series. Here we're just focusing on creating the CSRF token, right? So that's why I'm taking a very simple user start, which will have username password hash and it will have a role cool then let's define what our token claims would be so again soft type struct and we'll have jwt dot standard claims I've already explained to uh, this to you in the previous JWT authentication tutorial actually if you if you watch that and then come here it, it'll you know really help you out a lot because uh, we're building up on uh, JWT in the sense we're using JWT here but we're also using CSR right so we're using quite a lot of things that we, we've used there so here you'll have a role but obviously we're following a complete different project structure different type of a structure here different type of an approach so um, you know it's it's important to do both of them so here json is csrf all right so for uh, golang's purposes it's string but for json and json is going to look like this role in csrf okay but with, with uh, golang golang is going to refer it as role with the capital r whereas in json is going to look at look like this with the role with a small r I hope you're already familiar with that because Golang basically does not uh, is not able to work with um, JSON directly on its own, right? So that's why we have to use these kind of structs which uh, define, uh, you know, what the Golang will understand and what JSON understands. And here we'll just create two um, variables that we need. So one is the refresh token valid time. Any project that you build, you need to have a valid time for your refresh token and for your auth token so we'll have auth token valid time here you'll have time dot hour multiplied by 72 and you'll have time dot minute multiplied by 15 so refresh tokens are usually for very long durations and auth tokens are just for 15 or 20 minutes depend 15 or 30 minutes sometimes depending on whatever uh, you know type of security you need and then once those 30 minutes are over then your front end has to uh, use the refresh token to make a request to the back end to get another uh, auth token to it 
with react you can use interceptors to do the same i'll show you how to do that also in a future video in which we'll use uh, authentication and react uh, front end and then uh, in golang backend so we'll have a project like that soon coming up so we'll have a function called generate csr uh, secret we'll take a string and we'll return an error sorry it'll take uh, it'll return a string and error i meant and here you're returning random strings dot generate random string 32 bit okay so now um, what you want is uh, you want to create this file random strings all right so random strings is actually going to be a folder here so we'll create a new folder called random strings in that folder you will simply have a file called random strings dot go okay and it's going to be a very straightforward file actually but before that before that you want to go to your models and you want to first import that file so you'll say github.com slash golang csrf project slash uh, random strings so now this random strings is already in your models that's what you wanted and that's how you're calling this function called generate csrf secret so just generate a random string and here we need to have that function so here we will say package the package name is the name of the file in this case random strings you're going to import a couple of things and you're going to have functions so one of the functions that we have already uh, we already know is going to be generate random string takes uh, an integer which is 32 we're passing here right which is um, so yeah so string it returns a string and error now what do you want to import here so to Im import you're going to have crypto slash random and you're going to just call your encoding slash json sorry base64 you want to use base64 to create the random string so we'll call a function called generate random bytes this function we'll have to define in this file itself so for now you know we pass our s which is our integer that we have received and you capture that in a variable called b and also you capture the error and from this function you return base 64.url encoding dot and code to string b comma error awesome and here you'll have func generate random bytes and, and you have integer here you'll have byte comma error and here you'll have b is equal to make byte sorry byte comma n and you're going to use the random function to read b we'll capture that in a blank character and error and if there's an error which means error not equal to nil you're going to return nil for uh, the slice of bytes and you're going to return an error instead otherwise you return b as when everything is okay there's no error then you return b comma nil for the error so you turn b here for the slice of bytes that you want to create okay and once you have the slice of bytes which is in b here you return uh, you encode it into string and send it right so there's nothing much happening here this is it's not very complex so your models it uh, calls a function called generate random uh, generate a random string 
which uh, basically is a function written here. And this function is calling uh, generate random bytes. So all you're doing is basically generating random bytes, right? So it's returning random bytes to it, storing it in B, and we're then um, converting that random byte uh, into a string, and then we're sending it back here, right? So nothing. Uh, so 32, 32 length, uh, you know, string is what we're getting. So nothing fancy is happening here, all right? So your random strings file is complete. Your models file is complete and your main.co file is complete. So that's uh, congrats. That's a lot of a uh, lot of work that you've already done here. And now we can actually start working on our server.go file. So server.go file is the last file that I'll work on in this video. And in the next video, we'll continue with the rest of the uh, files. I hope that's all right because I have limited time today. So this is all the best I can do. So here we're going to import log. We're going to import net slash HTTP. We're going to import the middleware. Uh, package so we'll say github.com slash akil slash golang csrf token sorry project and middleware that's all we need to import here so the function that you need to define here is start server this is the function that you need to define and after that, we'll work on these these functions in it DB and in it JWT. So don't worry about that right now. Let's worry about the start server function because that's how the project the server starts running. So we'll create the function start server. It takes a host name which is string, port which is string, returns an error, and here you'll say host equal to host name plus port and you'll print listening on percentage s comma host and we'll create a handler middleware dot new handler and http dot handle slash comma handler and return http dot listen and serve host command very straightforward right you're listening on this port and you're creating a new handler so we'll obviously have to create this function called new handler in our middleware file right and we'll handle uh, starting from this slashed out with this handler so, right and we're going to listen and serve on this host very simple all this is doing is just starting a server right so like i said you know i'll have to run now for a meeting and then um, in the next video tomorrow i'll have to continue and we'll continue with the rest of the files so i hope you have done your main.go file models random strings server all of that is complete now we'll have to start working on our JWT, middleware, db.go, all these different files. I hope you're enjoying the series. And do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know the next uh, the, up uh, the update when whenever the next video of the series comes out. And I have more than 100 videos, uh, Golang videos on my channel. Do subscribe so that uh, you know you can keep learning. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode.